I'd like to skip for a second um, to something different because you mentioned that you've also trained uh, kids and that just brought me back that at the, at the beginning of this school year or since the beginning of this school year, I'm really trying to start implementing somewhat of a morning routine with my oldest. He's five years old now. Um, so we've been trying some Tabatas, as you mentioned before, that's very good. Um, we've doing some, you know, online, they got all these different kind of uh, kids exercises, animal movements, etc., etc. Lots of fun um, for a little bit. And then he's bored of it. <laughs> um, but the thing we at the moment like the most is, is yoga for kids. And the reason for that is that the lady that gives those um, exercises like 10, 15 minutes, she makes a whole story out of it. And of course, that's what he likes. He's young. But what I'm just wondering at the moment is like, you know, in your opinion, what's what's the best way to build up a workout habit for a kid? What's the right age to start with? And I think, and you already mentioned that, and I think this applies to this as well, that it's important to stay flexible and not worry if you skip a day or two, but just keep continuing to building it, correct? No, correct. Um, you know, so there, there are a couple of first, I, I think which we'll, we'll go over one of the most widely um, uh, misunderstood aspects of fitness with children. And a lot of people think that you shouldn't have your child lift weights until a certain age because it'll stunt their growth, which is like completely untrue. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of reasons why. Um, in American football, for example, or rugby, let's use rugby because you're in, you're in Europe. So in rugby, people would allow their kids to play rugby at what, five years old, six years old, right? Maybe even younger, right? They're learning the fundamentals of rugby. So in rugby, um, in American football, when two athletes are colliding into each other, the forces can be up to 10 times their body weight, right? So you're telling me that it's not okay to teach a kid to move a barbell properly or to move a dumbbell properly or to do calisthenics but it is okay to have him run into another human being and create forces up to 10 times their body weight on their joints without knowing how to properly move their hips, knees, ankles, and distribute body, you know, force, you know, amongst their body. So that's, that's the first point. You know, when you go and you, if you go look online at the world weightlifting championships, there's kids, I mean, they're five, seven, 13. I mean, these kids are strong. And I, the one thing I'll tell you is from training kids when I was, um, when I first started training, you do not want a kid that has been lifting weights and knows how to open their hips and close their hips properly and knows how to press something overhead. You do not want one of those kids putting their hands on your child in a sport where it's allowed in judo or wrestling or <laughs> even in football, you know, where, where bodies are colliding. Um, and especially a sport like rugby, because um, one of those kids understands how to create force and the other one doesn't. And it's only done through repetition. The other thing is um, I was just speaking with a guy this morning, an old friend of mine, whose son is actually now playing for the number one baseball team for 11 and 12 year olds in the country. And that's doing sports that are unilateral versus isolateral. So you want your kid doing like a sport like baseball. They throw with their right hand. They step forward with their left foot. They shift their weight forward from their back hip. And then they step forward with their right leg. So when they do this over and over and over again, you're going to develop an imbalance like football players. And again, when I say football, um, I'll say American football for this. When I say football, I'm speaking about European football. Um, they're going to be stronger on their plant legs. So a right, so a right footed, um, a right footed player is going to actually have more balance and development in their left leg all the way from their ankle up because that's their plant foot. And their right leg is their foot slightly externally rotated. It's kind of slightly rotated out so they can make contact on the inside of their foot. So they're going to be able to create a lot more force with it from that externally rotated position than their foot turned in. So understanding that, like have your kid do judo or actually what you were saying was phenomenal. Like those animal movements are some of the best because they're compound movements and they'll work almost every single joint. So you'll get their toes, their ankles, their knees, their hips their shoulders, their elbows, their wrists, all the way through their fingers will all get tons of work. Um, yoga is another great one because um, uh, even though kids will start out pretty flexible, once they get to about eight or nine years old, that can start to evaporate very quickly, especially with all the sitting in the video games. So um, I think everything that you're doing with your 
kid is, is pretty good. And anything that you can do to get them catching with both hands, uh, get them tracking a ball. That's another reason that um, even though soccer players don't have the best, uh, they're not known for hands. Um, if you put a soccer player in a position where they had to track a ball down, they would they do it pretty, pretty easily because they watch a ball go back and forth all the time. Um, it's another reason that um, American football players are, um, excuse me, American basketball players will translate and be very good American football players um, because they touch a ball a lot and they develop that skill. So then most, fo most football players, if you grow up playing football, you don't really get to touch the ball a lot, nor do you track a ball in the air unless you're a receiver. So in basketball, you might never play on the court, but you develop the skills of tracking a ball. So the, I, I guess what I'm getting down to is, is have your child play as many sports as possible, mimic like those animal movements and anything that's going to keep them limber and um, find a, a coach that can kind of show your child how to squat um, or teach you how to squat so you can teach your child. And don't be afraid to have your kid doing compound movements and lifting weights and lifting their own body weight for sure. Gymnastics might be, if you were, if, if I were to combine two sports, I would say I would have my, I would go back and have my kid play or when I have a kid, I'd have my kid uh, be in gymnastics from a very young age. And then I'd have them play uh, football because you're going to develop the speed. You're going to develop the change of direction. They're going to learn to work with both feet, but in gymnastics, they're going to develop stability and in an incredible amount of strength. Great. I like that. Really elaborated and explained why exactly the different things that makes it so easy for fathers to understand what the, you know, what the next steps could be for them. Uh, in our case, as I mentioned, we try to do yoga every morning if possible. Um, for me, the game is, is so vital too, man. That's so smart that you're doing it. It's got to be a game. I mean, they're kids, their, their attention span is going to be short. And you, and you want them to enjoy exercising. That's where I, I speak to a lot of coaches, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. I speak to this about, I speak about this to a lot of coaches, and that, see, when, when you do sport, they make you do push ups and they make you run as punishment. And then so now there's a connotation that doing those things when you don't have to do them, it, it's not fun. So you want to make exercising fun. You know, some of the some of the most athletic kids that I see coming up now, you know, five, six, seven years ago, they were inside the gym with their parents when they were very small. So they built a connotation with the gym being or excuse me, an association with this is a fun place. This is a place that all the cool people hang out, you know, and, and so they, they're going to grow up with that type of association with health and fitness. So you're you're just enabling your child in the right direction. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a perfect example of what I'm trying to achieve step by step <laughs> I'm bumping my head a lot of times, but it's a lot of fun. It, it's also fun to do it together because it you know, it, it's good for our connection and, and building up our relationship even stronger. So I'm definitely enjoying it. Um, they, outside of this, they also go to um, karate classes uh, twice. Again, again, yeah, another very good one. Yeah. And, and other than that, um, they used to go to English, but I, I changed that because we speak a lot of English at home already. And my level of English is way better than about 90% of the Spanish people. So, yeah, yeah. Um, we change that. They, they go painting now. So they go art classes to, to, to work on that creative side of, of theirs and their development of that. So, and so I really appreciate that. Hey man, I hope you got all the information out of this that you were looking for. If so, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you hit the bell, then every time we come out with a new video, you will be informed. For now, thanks for listening and I hope to see you soon.